Hey there. So we have been asked for an abbreviated craft tutorial, and that's what I'm going to try to do today. Give you a tutorial in less than 10 minutes. So let's get into it. So first, what is craft all about? It's a framework I built this January whenever I had the chance to step into continent scale and see over 50 million words per month produced by our users. Pretty incredible of undetectable human like high quality AI content. That's what our tool specializes in becoming the world's most human like AI writing solution. Right now we do long form SEO content. We do it really well. But as of November 7th, we have 40 different short form content types coming to the tool. So you can literally develop product descriptions, ebook content, press releases on and on you name it. So the craft tutorial is all about guiding writers into the new world of AI, because you have to reskill. Writing looks different. This is what it looks like. It looks like following a series of steps that writers know how to do best and applying that to the AI output. So those steps are, we have an acronym for it called craft, cutting the fluff, taking down all the verbosity that AI tends to write, reviewing it, making sure it's ready, the SEO optimization is on point. The wording, the sentence flow is good and sound. Adding images, bringing it to life with visuals, fact checking. AI is notorious for not having a source of truth. Our AI at Content Scale is different because it does real time research. The minute you click write content, it actually goes and looks at Google, breaks down the information there, and pulls in the best facts. And it links to those. So you have visibility where the facts actually come from. That's all automated in continent scale. And lastly, you want to trust build. This is a huge one. This is especially true for Google's eat, which is their acronym that they look at whenever rating content and sending content to the top of Google. So Google's eat acronym stands for experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trust. You want to meet those benchmarks whenever you're writing and publishing content. If you don't forget ranking, it won't happen. Trust building is all about that experience, baking that into your content. So I want to show you a piece of content that's ranking at the top of Google. It's kind of fluctuating going up and down. <laughs> um, but I do want to pull this up as an example. Right now it's in the top 10 of Google, the sixth position. And I'm looking here at SEMrush. So it's ranking for the keyword, how to report copyright infringement. And we actually wrote this with content at scale. So this was written by AI, but it was humanly edited following the craft tutorial. So we went through this content and we made it beautiful. A few ways we did that. I'll just work through it. So what we do that's very heavy, especially on my blog, we do, we go deep here is we really bring in the facts and we do it in two ways. We link to the fact that was mentioned. You can see it right here with the copyright link. And then we bring that fact to life with a picture, a screenshot, a graph, something that we pulled from that fact. So we're literally opening the source. We're screenshotting it. And then we're opening the screenshot and we're adding in highlights, which is very simple. A writer can learn how to do that literally 20 to 30 seconds. But this just brings it to life. This adds that extra touch. And that's what gra uh, <laughs> craft, I almost said graph. That's what craft is all about, right? It's bringing that touch to your content that really sets your content to that next level where people are like, whoa, okay, I see this brought to life. I now trust this publisher, right? We're not just citing a fact here. We're bringing it to life with that screenshot. That matters more than you know, right? I've studied blogging for 11 years, learned under some of the best. And whenever you go the extra mile, not just take a screenshot, but you actually highlight things, you circle things, we will insert arrows and point to things. That really just gives the reader something that is easy to consume. And again, that's what Craft Framework is all about too. How do we make this content easy to consume? We're going to bring this content to life with visuals. We're going to make it feel like you're reading a picture book, right? Always work at a fourth to fifth grade level in your content. Make it very, very simple to understand. Another way we're bringing this to life, I'm going to jump on over to trust building, is through links. So Links can be done in two ways. You're going to link to an authority source, right? Copyright.gov, which Content Scale helps us do. And I'll show you this. We just ran a keyword right now for the purpose of this training. So this is straight out of AI. Did not edit anything. So I'll show you that in a second. 
and what it looks like. But what you want to do with links, pull in authority sources and then internal linking to other pages on your site. So for us, we have a podcast, we have an episode on this topic, right? The writer needs to understand that the writer needs to look at all of our other content. If I'm not the one crafting my own content here, do this for your clients too. look at their other content, understand what is out there on their site link to those other formats, embed YouTube videos. This is another huge one. I have a YouTube channel, right? That YouTube channel is full of amazing content. I want my writers to link to this content to embed it in my blog because it's that good. All right. And we have very relevant topics. If we're talking about sales and marketing, here's a video I did on how to boost your sales funnel. So that's going to go in that blog and get embedded around the first H2. This is an H2. These are your subheaders. Okay, so as we scroll through, another way that we're linking is CTAs. So a CTA for me is a sentence. And again, I've tested this extensively. We're talking 10 years, 40,000 content projects. I've trained over 1300 writers, had the chance to test a lot of theories and actually find out what works. Um, so CTAs are best done whenever you have a sentence, you want to watch italics, I'll probably tell my writer, let's not do italics, because that can be unaccessible for devices that are reading aloud to the hearing impaired, the blind, you really want to make your content accessible. That's actually a ranking signal. Um, so we'll probably remove the italics. Um, but CTAs are best done in two ways, a sentence where you actually explain to them what you're about what they're about to click on. Don't just say go to my free training. Hey, did you know growing your business and protecting your assets go hand in hand, learn how to grow in my free training. And then we back that up because not everyone's going to click that link with this big, beautiful image. And preferably, if you are your brand, you put yourself on that image. Let me tell you, you talk about trust building, personal story, personal touch, your picture. <laughs> if you have a personal brand, if you have an amazing founder, if you have an amazing spokesperson, somebody in your company that can represent you, if it's you put that picture on your CTAs, I can't stress that enough. Kick imposter syndrome to the curb, you deserve to be there. Don't let your head tell you otherwise, you will get more clicks do it just for that reason. So as we scroll through, you can see that we're continuing with this sequence, this style, we're citing something factual, that is an example related to the point. And then we have a screenshot so they can see exactly how to do it. You don't want anyone scrolling through your blog and not knowing what to do. If you say, Step number three is to report copyright infringement to the FBI. Well, you better tell me exactly how to do this. You better screenshot the form. Otherwise, it's not good content because it doesn't actually answer the question. If you treat every subheader like a question you need to answer, you can't go wrong. The biggest mistake that I see a lot of writers do is rabbit hole. They create rabbit trails. They go down runways they don't need to go down. And they're talking about irrelevant things, stay on topic. And you can see we end this blog with another image and sentence CTA. And here I actually have myself twice. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> we might tell the designer, Hey, tone that down just a little bit. But it's a lot better than me not being present. Because again, what builds trust? It's you. It's a person in your company. That is the bridge to that person. And your content needs to do the heavy lifting. When people get down here, they should be ready to click this, they should be interested to take the next step. That's when your content works for you. But content only works whenever you're following these steps. So I want to show you what it looks like we got one minute left here. I'm trying to keep this to 10 minutes. <laughs> Straight out of AI. We actually have really good stuff here because we've trained the AI on our style, which we can do in the project settings of content at scale. We have all the subheaders written for us. We won't rabbit trail because content at scale actually did the research for us. And it's writing true SEO content that stays on topic. This is amazing. This is going to save me about seven hours out of an eight hour blog writing process. And now I just need to bring this to life. I might even go to mid journey and generate an image of a business owner manifesting. And I might put that here. 
and I'm going to have to clean up, right? Like there's weird little things, apply that framework and you can't go wrong. All right, we're going to stop this at 10 minutes. <laughs> if you want to see any other tutorials, this video is in a YouTube format. So please drop a comment. Let me know what else you want to see and how else I can help you create content the content hacker way, which is profitable content, content that never misses the mark. I'll see you on the next video.